Welcome back to Our Canada, Our Future. We're joined today by Dr. Kevin Bardas at the University of Washington talking about unintended consequences from COVID restrictions. Um, there's a lot to unpack, Kevin, but I wanted to start uh, with one of the consequences that you identify in this paper that you've co-authored, specifically on the impact on public trust. Uh, I guess I'll put to you, what did you and your co-authors discuss when it came to the impact of a lot of these uh, restrictions and measures on public trust? I mean, that's a, it's a really important question. Um, I think that on, on the one hand, we pointed to inconsistencies, right? So the public, um, first of all, we have vaccine mandates, right? So this is not very, I mean, there's some controversy about vaccine mandates, but we have school vaccine mandates, right? Um, those are typically implemented do during moments of political calm, when the national temperature is low. Um, also, those vaccines have been around for a long time, which reduces the controversies by which the public interpret them. Um, with COVID-19 vaccines, you actually had a situation where political leaders around the democratic world said, we are not going to mandate these vaccines. The WHO head of the emergency, uh, not the head of the emergency program, but some vaccinologist, very senior, said, you know, we shouldn't in December 2020, we shouldn't va mandate COVID vaccines. Um, uh, and, and then they sort of flipped, flipped the gun and then started mandating things. Now, when, uh, let's say, the U.S. and Canadian mandates started in the in sort of uh, spring to mid-2021, there was a huge amount of data from the U.K. and Israel showing that these vaccines were not durable, meaning that they didn't stop transmission, right? And any uh, intelligent and honest epidemiologist at the time would tell you it's transient. These, these are not, you know, these are leaky vaccines. You're gonna, still going to tr transmit the virus. So we had this cognitive dissonance, this, this contradiction between uh, you know, what was going on in other countries that started the vaccine programs earlier and what Canadian and American political leaders were telling the public. Okay, and so, I mean, when you say that the vaccines didn't prevent transmission, was it a case of authorities maybe overselling uh, what the vaccines yeah. would do? Uh, I mean, there's two things vaccines can do. They, could, they can help uh, reduce severe outcomes. They can also prevent transmission. Right. And you're saying that uh, rather than focusing on, on one, uh, reducing severe outcomes, governments here were uh, implying or saying outright that they not only would reduce severe outcomes, but they would also reduce transmission? Exactly. I mean, the vaccines were, were sort of sold or marketed to the, to the Canadian public as a means to end the pandemic, right, in quotation marks. This clearly did not happen, right? And what I'm saying is that that was actually known uh, before these vaccine mandates, passports and restrictions based on vaccination status were rolled out in Canada. So essentially, you have a situation where somebody who's, who makes the claim that the pharmaceutical industry has, has influenced these policies it's not making a ludicrous statement. Right, and, and, and I think and it's if, fair if to I say just, that if you make... If, if I could just follow up on that, on that comment, um, you know, I'm not an anti-vaxxer, but I, I do find it very interesting that in, in our society, um, questioning a pharmaceutical drug, whether it's a, an antidepressant or a heart, uh, you know, medication is considered acceptable. In fact, it's, it's considered clinically necessary. What, what age groups need these drugs and which, which age groups do the actual harms possibly outweigh the benefits? This is basic medicine, right? But with vaccines, we seem to be entering an area where rational discussion is not possible. If you voice any reasonable skepticism, saying, for example, young healthy people that have had COVID shouldn't get vaccinated, right? You're suddenly thrown into a camp of a right wing sort of, uh, you know, irrational person. I think that it's it borders on this strange sort of hysteria. Yeah, it's interesting. It's hard to think of another context where people would be eager to uh, sort of uh, want things approved. You know, if someone were to say, well, we need to get this drug on pandemic environment. Um, most people would say, well, no, we should probably take our time and do this as carefully as possible. And yet we see the opposite uh, during yeah. the pandemic, uh, partly perhaps because of the, the perceived uh, threat. Um, um, you know, in terms of public trust as well, I mean, what do you think the long term consequences in terms of public trust in, in public health authorities and, and, uh, and political figures when they make claims about vaccines? I think we've seen an, an incredible deterioration of the trustworthiness of our regulatory agencies. Um, I'm speaking specifically about the CDC, which I know better than the Canadian context. 
Um, I think that there needs to be a complete revamping of the regulatory environment for pharmaceutical products. Um, and uh, there needs to be more transparency and honesty. Um, and for example, there was a uh, Freedom of Information Act request to the FDA and Pfizer to release the internal documents uh, related to the regulatory process. The FDA asked for 75 years to comply with this, right? That presents an idea to the public like, hey, we're hiding something. That's unacceptable.